Welcome to a Besto TV production. If you enjoy our content, please click the subscribe button. To get notifications of new releases, ring that bell. Thank you, and away we go. Well, we've talked to just about everyone from OSI 74, a brand new channel with a lot of weirdness. Uh, we still haven't talked to the founder of OSI 74, which is, uh, which is me. Uh, so I'm not sure how, how, I, how am I going to interview myself. Woo! Parallel Game Creative Continuity at RetroCon 2015. Wait, oh. wait, wait a second. What year is this? 2015. Oh, okay. You from the future? Um, well, let's not talk about that. Let's not, let's, let's, uh, uh, could be, I could be from the, maybe you're from the past, I'm from the future. Something, some weird space time continuum thing I think is happening here. Before there's a huge antimatter explosion, maybe you could do me a favor and interview me for creative continuity. I can do that. Okay, excellent, excellent. Creative continuity. We bring the convention to you. Oh, okay, creative continuity. I'm here with the Cinema Insomnia creator. Creator. And host. And host, yes. The unnecessarily mysterious Mr. Lobo. You are under my power. Look into the hypnotic eye. I started like we all started, uh, you know, as fans. Uh, I, you know, I wrote uh, articles for magazines about movies, and uh, I did cartoons and a lot of things that didn't amount to much. Uh, and as and then I uh, got a job at a TV station. They had a movie at three in the morning that ran 20 minutes short. And um, I went to the general manager and I said, "You've got this movie that runs 20 minutes." 20 minutes short in the middle of the night, could I fill that 20 minutes with something? Hmm. And because uh, you know that time wasn't really valuable to them, they didn't have a lot of advertisers, uh, they didn't really care. So they, I created the format for the show Cinema Insomnia. We did it for two years at an ABC station in Northern California. And then after that, we syndicated it and it was picked up, at one point it was on uh, in 45 markets across the country wow. in, on uh, different, uh, you know, local broadcast stations. Um, so this was this would be back in 2001. You're not dreaming. You're watching Cinema Insomnia. Tonight's feature is brought to you in Super Monochromoscope. Pregnant women or animals should consult their doctor. I'm your host, Mr. Lobo. Tonight's feature is entitled "They Made Me a Criminal." And it stars John, I Hate Monday's Garfield, Claude Rains, and the Dead End Kids. Yes, I said the Dead End Kids. Yes. Were you Mr. Lobo at that time? Was I Mr. Lobo at that time? Yes. Yes, when I started the show Cinema Insomnia, Lobo is my given last name. Oh, okay. And uh, when I started the show at Cinema Insomnia, I thought, well, what if this catches on? What if I have to live with this? And I didn't want to be like getting into my car at like two in the morning and have someone go, hey, 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 Uncle Spooky Pants. Yeah, I saw the movie last Uncle Saturday Spooky night. Pants. So instead of Uncle Spooky Pants or whatever, Dr. Lazy Bones or whatever, I thought, hey, well, if I'm Mr. Lobo, I could be someone's geometry teacher. I could be someone from work, you know? So I thought, I thought it was something that I could just, I, I felt it was a, a persona, like when I grew up in the 80s, there were people like Mr. T and, and Pee Wee Herman, and, and they were all like kind of these larger than, yes, the Dukes of Hazard, So 80s. Uh, 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 larger than life people who would live their character, and I always thought that was cool. So I thought that, well, I'm gonna do this character, and if it works out, you know, maybe it'd be something I could just keep going. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I, I came up with Mr. Lobo, and it was much easier to be a character, because when you're yourself, you're really self-conscious. But as Mr. Lobo, I could kind of make fun of myself a little bit. So I, I you know, if I if I made a mistake, it wasn't me making a mistake. It was uh. Mr. Lobo making a mistake. So it was for me as a novice in front of the camera, it was more comfortable to pretend I was somebody else than than to, um, you know, 
be so naked and go, you know, this is me, a regular guy you'd have a beer with. That's hard. To, to, I'm not a normal guy anyway. I've always been a little odd. So I just sort of made fun of myself and became kind of a caricature of myself. So that's how Mr. Lobo happens. Philip's sideburns are pretty woolly too, even for a werewolf or wild man or whatever he's supposed to be. Um, we're going to try and figure out the timeline of this movie during the break. Sideburns. Sideburns. Talking apes? So, how is Mr. Lobo different from the real Mr. Lobo? I'm glad you asked that question. My ex-wife says that Mr. Lobo are, is all of my most annoying traits amplified. Mm. But I would say it's all of my most annoying traits finally set free. Ooh. Good answer. <laughs> so I guess it's easy to say which one you enjoy being more. Yeah, it's weird because when you play a character, and they're probably drag queens go through this, probably a lot of people go through this, where you, okay, you go through your life being a certain person, mm -hmm. and then you pretend to be someone else for the camera. But after a while, and I've been doing this for 16 years, whew, after a while, you the person you're pretending to be for the camera is closer to who you really are than the person you pretend to be for ex-wives and your friends from school and your boss and the, you know, the bill collectors and you know we're always pretending. Right. And and so you know sometimes when you don't have your guard up and you're 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 you're, you're just being silly, you know, you kind of surprise yourself that you know maybe you, there's more to you. We don't need to hang on to these cassettes and tapes and cosmic spools and whatnots. I mean, look at this. This is this uh, negative land, no business CD in the long box. You know, uh, well that's pretty rare. I mean, my negative land co collection. I mean, that would just I'd never be able to replace that. So we'll put that in the key box. But most of this stuff can go. Look, your copy of of Serial Mom. You know, you don't even need cereal. You know, and this autographed copy of uh, Hairspray signed by John Waters. He scribbled all over it. It's worthless. But Mr. Lobo's copy of Stephen King's Misery, I mean, uh, this is on eight easy listening cassette tapes. You know, the whole book. Uh, I mean, how often does Stephen King write about writer's block and alcoholism? Almost never, right? So so we can keep, I guess we'll hang on to this one. What can I tell them about your show to bring them in? Uh, well, you know, yeah, it's funny because we live in a world where it's like, I want you to like this, like me, you know, smush the like button. You know, you can't force anybody to like anything, certainly not. I think that the, the people who find it, who are the most interested, uh, some of them are people who are fans of things like Elvira or Mystery Science mm -hmm. Theater. Uh, basically, uh, people like strange movies, uh, sci-fi, horror movies, cult movies, um, and they want kind of um, it presented in a way with some comedy and some, uh, uh, we, we show a lot of like old bit retro commercials and uh, short films, and so it's kind of mixed through with a lot of weirdness. We do interviews similar to this uh, on some of the shows. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, it's a bad movie in a, and some good company on a, on a Saturday night uh, or, or whenever you want. But I think it's best enjoyed uh, in, you know, in your jammies with some hot cocoa, or you know, or or stronger beverage, uh, and 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 you know, uh, have a few laughs, and uh, and you know, they're not bad movies, just misunderstood. <laughs> Convinced? Do you have a title? Well, watch anyway. Would you like have a title? You're not dreaming. You're watching Cinema Insomnia. They're not bad movies, just misunderstood. New episodes only on OSI 74. What can you tell us about uh, OSI 74? OSI 74, that stands for Outer Space International, which is uh, basically a made up uh, 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 distribution uh, uh, company. Uh, that's how it started. Uh, uh, all the old movies, it was always Universal International. It's like, well, if it's Universal, isn't it already international, you know? And then it was uh, American International. It's like, well, if it's American, then how can it be international? So I thought, well, if I have something that doesn't make any sense, 
I can have my own distribution network. So Outer Space International is my distribution network. Uh, we have B-movies on our channel, but we also have uh, my show on the channel. We have uh, Sleazy P. Martini from Guar, which is a heavy metal, intergalactic heavy metal band, barbarians, I guess, from another planet that have a band. Uh, they have material on our channel. Um, we have um, a lot of uh, old cartoons, Saturday morning cartoons. We have um, uh, UFO stuff and Bigfoot stuff. You know, so a lot of things that not, aren't just horror, aren't just funny, aren't just weird, but a lot of unusual underground sort of content. Um, I, I, I had a lot of deals with uh, distributors and channels and networks over my 16 year career that were terrible. You know, it's really hard for independent to really break through. That I know from first day. Uh, so, you know, uh, so I really just kind of, first it started with all my friends who ever had bad distribution deals, but then it expanded into, well, who who's out there who's doing something that's cool that we want to support? And um, so uh, we just, we started it out as a collective. We're all cross-promoting. We don't own any of the content on the channel. Everyone is has a free hand to do whatever they want with their projects. Um, but, but everyone is happy to have uh, a home on the channel and a place where they can point to and say, well, here's where you can watch my show and whatever. And it also is building an audience. You know, you gotta find all those weirdos out there who like that weird stuff. And, and, and I can't produce enough content by myself to hold on to those people. Mm -hmm. So if we're all together on it, we can kind of keep them in our world watching our various different weirdo projects. And so that's, that's basically how OSI 74 started. Uh, you know, it's a nice kind of umbrella to, sort of for us to all be under. It looks professional, <laughs> even though we may not always be very professional. It, it, it's a nice front. It's a nice, it's, a nice, it's a nice vessel to sort of pour our various projects into. And, and then, you know, because we don't have Disney behind us or Sony behind right, us or right, Universal right. behind us. So we're just kind of, you know, we're being our own corporate entity to sort of further our own projects even though we really are a bunch of independent artists. No. No. This is a Roku. You can buy this model uh, at uh, Walmart for like 30 bucks. You plug it into the back of your TV. Uh, if you have Wi-Fi in your house, there are thousands of free channels, but you can also add your Netflix and your Hulu and your favorite pay channels to it as well. And it's a, if you don't have a smart TV, it's a good way to watch those services as well. So uh, uh, if, you, if, you, if you do have a Roku, you can go to the channel store and add OSI 74, and you can watch Cinema Insomnia. All right, Mr. Lobo, thank you for the interview. Thank you for the interview. No problem. Carol Ken, RetroCon 2015, signing out. Great, now we lost another microphone. Watch creative continuity, cartoons, con rewind, Mr. Lobo does, and more on this channel. Creative continuity, we bring the convention to you.